as we're all speechless, but uh, maybe there's some more questions here. So you mentioned that uh, some of your clients don't seem to uh, measure their results. So you, what do you recommend things like uh, urgent or next analytics? What, what do you use to measure? I'm actually working on the problem now. Well, you have to um, you have to develop an algorithm which is predictive with what their revenue streams are. I, I, what's hard, we, I'm actually developed a custom for them internally. What's hard is that, like I have a client, for example, who sells ads uh, for internet advertising. But it's very hard to go and understand, well, here's the, pro the system that we built. How much revenue did it generate? Ooh, that's really what you care about. Ooh, that's quite hard to figure out because the ads aren't quite sold the way we, so you have to kind of go in and figure out where the, the most important part, where the most important holes are and try to find them and measure them. What, like in, in machine learning, one of the things we do is we try to just measure the confidence of your predictions. Here, take the top, take the top 5% of your predictions and see how confident you are in them. Then expand your problem and see if you're more confident on those top 5%. That would be one example. Another would be to do cross-validation. Take a chunk of your data that you're trying to make predictions on. If this is the data you're trying to make a model on, well, split it in half. Make the model on this set and try to predict on this set and see how well you do. It seems kind of obvious, right? You take your data, break. It's not. Not obvious. So these things are things that can be done internally um, and algorithmically. Not th that kind of stuff. Yeah, so uh, part of the people in here are in a business intelligence class. And so that's built into SQL Server. You need to have your training in data centers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, there, these things are sort of standard policy practices in machine learning. We know about training and cross validation, but we're not really. You, you go into a large, complicated environment, and you know people are just sort of building stuff off the cuff. They don't know this. I mean, the traditional product manager wouldn't know to do that. And how to actually apply it? Um, it, it it's it, it's astounding to me. I don't understand why I go into an organization. They don't understand. They, they build something and put it into production. And they never bothered to measure it on their back data. They never tested it. Never, never bothered. Just, just put it in. So yeah, it's astounding that they don't do this. But not really, because from a, an organizational perspective, the guys who are making the decisions are product guys. They're not mathematicians. They don't know to think that way. So they don't organize it in that way. And engineers don't usually work that way. Engineers like to build things. They don't like to measure things. That's the best way to put it. Yeah, yes? The onset, you said that uh, many Hadoop projects are being shut off, right? Uh, so, uh, many of them are a challenge, yes. Yeah, it's a little, 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 little. The client I'm with now took nine months to set up Hadoop. Nine months. We just, just, kept, just ignored it. I've, I've gone to other clients. They have Hadoop, have one node. Hadoop is a distributed system. It's supposed to have hundreds, like 100 nodes. Have one node. I could set it up for you in an hour without it. So it's, people are having a lot of, a lot of what, what, what they do is they set it up and then they pull all the data out and bring it somewhere else to do the analysis. Is it just a fad that's catching up the market? That's because people are not real, really understanding the value of it. It's, it's good for Facebook, it's good for Yahoo, it's good for Google. It may not be good for a... Here, here's the real value. People are understanding that they need to get all their data in one place. When, when we were at BlackRock, I think we acquired Lehman Brothers. And, you know, Lehman Brothers crash and BlackRock, and we had to manage this, this mess. Lehman Brothers they had 2,000 databases. They had more databases than they had customers. There's so, you know, I'm not kidding when I say you go into an organization, you ask, where's the data? Six months later, you're still trying to get the data. They don't know where it is. So the, the really positive impact Hadoop, of Hadoop has been everyone is putting all their data in one place. The negative impact is that Hadoop is a fairly complicated system. Um, and making it run is, and it, it, it's, you know, it's kind of, they sell it on the idea, you have Google technology. A lot of people don't need Hadoop. But it's, uh, it's, it's very complicated. And the problem is once you have it, it doesn't, all it does is collect your data into one place. That's positive. The negative part is that, well, so what? It does not care what reference you do. I'm sorry? It does not care what reference you do. No, no, not at all. It's just, a bunch of, it's, it's just a bunch of flat files. It's just flat files. Yeah. 
you know, we, we, we go into clients, we have one client, one client I work with, they're concerned, we want to copy all their data, Pierre, we're trying to get the data, we're going to get all the data. How much data do you have? Well, about three terabytes. Okay. I'll put it at home on my time machine backup, no problem. They think they need Hadoop they, for three terabytes. I mean, that's, that, I, this, this machine has one terabyte of flash drive. You don't need to set up 100 nodes. I was working on Hadoop, but something similar, system similar to this about 15 years ago. We had 50 node machines hooked up with um, 3.5 3 gigabit switches. These were multi-million dollar research operations. They are, yes, clusterified for doing large scale numerical simulations. But the, the problem is that you can't also run, if you want to run a machine learning algorithm, it doesn't run in Hadoop. You have to get all the data out and put it into something else. And then you run, you put it into R, you put it into Python, and then you run your algorithm. And that's what people do. It's not mostly getting the mainstream, like, you know, running your business. No, it's not, it's, it's probably the BI stuff and all that kind well, of stuff. Well, th think about you're an IT manager at a company, and you have a choice to make. Hmm. Can I buy one big machine and hire two guys? Or can I buy 20 little machines and hire 10 guys? Okay, I've just made my organization bigger. My kingdom is bigger. What's scary, that's why, I mean, that's part of the motivation. They're IT guys who are pushing this. They're not, they're not marketing guys. They're not scientists who are pushing this. They're not the, they're, they're not the product guys. They're the IT guys. So you do the whole sort of thing. Yes. There are clients like, with, like, clients like what I have now, like we're doing large scale ad click prediction where we have billions and billions of impressions. Then it's useful because it, it's collecting log files, but it's definitely oversold and I don't recommend it for, I mean, I did the demand media stuff on my laptop on the, on the airport on the way home from Santa Monica. I didn't need Hadoop to do that. But, you know, if you're doing, you know, it's, it's definitely, um, what happens is you know, it's sort of like they don't want to do so we'll just get Hadoop. And then two years later, well, you still don't know what to do. So I'm kind of like an intellectual janitor. I go in and clean up this mess and try to figure out what to do with the data they have. But isn't most people uh, follow the strategy saying we don't want any single files? No SQL is an old idea. It's flat files. So it's, See, are we, uh, it's more to get rid of the articles in Microsoft. Well, it's, I think there's a lot of political. Uh, you know, you start putting stuff into Oracle, and then you have a database administrator. And then you, we have cases where we have clients, we have everything's in Oracle. Well, can we see any of the data? Oh, no, you can't look at the replica. Okay. Then we go back. Can we look at the replica? Yes, you can look at the replica. Oh, but we didn't replicate the actual data. Okay, and you know this goes on for weeks, and finding it. So you know a lot of it is is a cultural shift and trying to break open the data and get to it, and saying, look, you, if you collect data, you got to be able to look at it. I, I work with clients who work for what, five six weeks. We can't do a single query. Nobody knows how to get into the data. They're just collecting it. That's the real problem. You know, we, we want to replicate it and, and, and restructure it and look at. It. You would think that yeah, there, I mean there are companies who have things like data marts and. Star schemas and an Oracle has had machine learning in it since Oracle 10. It's been in there for 10 years. Nobody uses it. So um, there are a lot of cultural issues that come up in, 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 in the companies and trying to, to break these systems open and get inside, you know, and kind of break the, the shell and get into the nut and figure out what's going on. That's the real challenge. Do you have to have data to use your company? Or can it be from a very initial step of a startup? Oh, we work with startups. We have a crawler. We built our own production crawl, a little baby Google. So we crawled it. A lot of we just got and crawled it, like we built a classifier. We just got and crawled the web for something. That's actually very common. Um, you, you hedge funds want to do this. They crawl the web and then they want to try to correlate. You know, they want to crawl Zillow and figure out all the real estate listings and then try to correlate. You know, front run the earnings. So that's very common actually the, that you go out and crawl the web for data. Uh, typically, it involves uh, a lot of a, or sort of a joint. You have some data, we crawl some data, you buy some data, you mix it all up. Yes? Um, have you seen any use cases of, non standard use cases of unsupervised learning where it's not tied back to the revenue? For example, uh, on access logs, uh, just login events to identify if uh, somebody has hacked into your. Yeah, yeah, well, that for, for anomaly detection, I, um, we do something a little different. We, had, we did do some of this stuff. Anomaly detection is usually used like one class SVMs. But we, we, the, the issues with unsupervised learning is that a lot of people want to do something like, I want to build a pro, I want to cluster people into profiles. And then they find out that the learning algorithm is non-convex. And so it doesn't converge. And so every, you get different clusters. 
And so you, you, if you, you, you can use it. I, we actually use this at BlackRock to do things like build risk models using unsupervised. But it's sort of semi-supervised. The unsupervised learning algorithms don't work so well in production. You have to add labels sometimes to them and to at least some of the data and kind of force it into the clusters you want. Otherwise, it doesn't converge properly. And so when you're working, what happens in production environments is you have a lot of messy data or just data that has like some documents are this long, some documents are this long, and the clustering algorithm just goes bananas. So it's a lot of work to get them to work. But yeah, they, they definitely, definitely do them for um, uh, recommend, you know, they, they're definitely, people like to cluster things. They like to feel that you can cluster things in, so it's a very popular request. For some of those who's interested to study the field of data science, do you have any recommendation of what we can do to prepare ourselves? Just tell people you're a data scientist, and they'll hire you. They, they don't, it, it's actually really hard to get a job. I, I've worked with some subcontractors. They, nobody knows how to interview. So they just don't know how to interview people. So they'll, they'll, you know, they'll give them homework assignments and send them home. Uh, I have a, a guy I work with who is like, he, he, he started doing contests on Kaggle. And they go in and people don't, you know, they, they, they don't, it, it, it's, which is a good thing to do because it gives you some exposure. Uh, but remember when you work in data science, the issue is you probably, unless you have a data science department specifically, you might, you might end up working with software engineers and they're going to expect you to know software. So you have to sort of target who you're going after based on your own knowledge. If you know software, that's good. If you don't, you kind of want to get into people who are more business analytics oriented um, so you can focus there. Are we good? I think you wanted to get out of here at 9.30. Uh, yeah, we have to get out at uh, 9.30, but thanks a lot. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Walter. All right. Thanks, guys.